Hi everyone, the Avali model has been out for a few days by now and I get the same questions over and over and over again on my stream and I figured it might be a good idea to talk about them in a little video. So there are some very generic questions of you know what to do, where to progress and these kind of things and I figured that I can give you a bit of guidance here if you haven't really you know seen too much else. So first things first, the campaign. So as you have probably noticed, there are some level gates in certain zones where you need to grind up to level X and this allows you to progress in the story. So this starts the first time in Library of Sultan Cool, where you need to be at least level 35 and then for Biofen it is at least 40 and so on up to level 56 in Realm of the Nation, the last zone. So how do you get XP the most efficient way? It is dungeon runs, namely Mad King's Breach or Forgotten Tower. So what you want to do is to gear up fast, especially get the XP fast, is you want to max out your battle pass as much as possible. Whenever you level up your battle pass, you get something like half a level or more. And while the XP gained from kills and from the experience gloves and massacre bonuses is also a pretty decent chunk, the battle pass is really the kicker there. So you want to make sure that you run one of those two dungeons because they are rather fast. There are these other dungeons and they might have like this you know featured activity bonus but in most cases it will probably be not be that great but you can probably try if there's like this times two reward on some of them but for the most part it's those two and you just rank up your battle pass as much as possible and you can proceed to the next zone obviously there are tons of other objectives that it can follow but if you want to do it quickly and especially towards the later parts of the campaign it does take a while to reach those levels then you want to do it this way with dungeons because you simply get the fastest battle points per time spent and you also get a decent amount of xp from the kills now the second point legendary items so a lot of people also ask me about this like how do you get the most loot and these kind of things and the answer is pretty similar so dungeon runs in general is actually something that you're going to be doing quite a lot at least if you plan to play a lot so there are a lot of daily and weekly caps that you want to reach for various activities. So you usually want to go for those first and then any kind of like leftover time spent farming will most likely be dungeon runs because there you get lots of loot, you get set items as long as you're blasting in hell one or higher and also just lots of legendary items. And some of them are very important to make a build. They have some very strong bonuses and they allow you to play around with you know, various um, combos for your character. So you generally want to get as many of them as possible. Personally, I have maybe acquired like two thirds or so of all the monk legendaries by now. So it is a very effective strategy. There are many other sources of legendary items and you can also just go around, explore zones, try to find elites, especially the orange elites. They have a very high chance of dropping legendary loot. You can do the ancient arena in Biofan and uh, the bestiary is very good as well. But for the most part, you will grind those dungeons. Another really good source are also hidden lairs. So typically you want to do one or two of them per day, depending on whether you get lucky with the level two pop up. It's a 50-50 chance after you've completed the first level that you go into the second. And you get some regular gems there, up to six per day, I believe. It's three per floor. And this is also filled with lots of extra small events, lots of elites. And you also have a pretty good chance of getting some legendary loot here. So if you are playing at you know very unpopular hours, especially, and you have some other friends around that are also farming with you, then this might be a good idea just roaming the zones together in various directions and then opening layers together, blasting through them. Because whenever one of these hidden layers is completed, it will close and then a new one will spawn somewhere in the zone. And there's only so many hidden layer spawns, so you can basically find them very, very quickly if you do this when no one else is around. So if you're like on in the middle of the night, this can be a very good strategy. Or if you happen to get lucky to just find them somewhere while running around doing your bounties or something like that. Hidden layers is always pretty good. And the third FAQ that I want to highlight is about hills and crests. So I already talked about this in my free to play tips video. Buy the crests 
all of them whenever you can. Also check the limited time offers and basically nothing else. You can consider the legendary gem, but typically only if you actually want this gem. Otherwise it's kind of lost probably and you're probably better off just getting crests because they give you a chance at actually better legendary gems. And this is only a one star you can buy directly once a month. And also when you're using those crests, you can do so as soon as you have them. So if you have any rare crests, you can just add them, say legendaries, and it scales the rewards linearly. So you don't have to do multiple runs just with one crest each or something like this. You also don't need to wait until you're a higher level or anything like that because you just add these runes and the embers and the legendary gems or the chance for legendary gems and they don't scale in any way. You can always run with your crests, it doesn't matter. One thing you can consider though is that you can share the fading ember drops, so it's one of the very few things that you can actually share in this game with other people. So when you run a Elder Rift, you get eight fading embers per run by default and for each crest that you add, you add one fading ember. And this fading ember will be shared to your party members. And if they also add crests, you will also gain a few extra. You can see this here on the top, there's a weekly cap of 200 that you can farm yourself just from running rifts and also from adding crests. And also the bonus weekly limit, which is that shared from other people to you. So when they add crests, you get the bonus. And the last question I want to cover here is about the battle pass. So some people have noticed that it is capped. So if you blast a lot, then you will have reached level 23. If you bought the empowered battle pass, it might be a bit higher. I'm not 100% sure how that works, but again, there's also a weekly cap. And if you're free to play, then 23 is the maximum for the first week. Now, this doesn't really mean that much anyway, because the battle pass only goes to 40. So essentially you can max it out in the second week and then you have to wait like two or three weeks anyway for the next battle pass. After 40 you only get this extra gift of renown. It only has a few hills, a few scrap materials. It's not really that crazy. That is kind of like an infinite um, bonus reward that you get for getting those battle points. But you really want to just reach the end of this you know, rank 40 battle pass anyway and the rest doesn't really matter. But the battle pass is only really just the beginning anyway, so while you do care about it a lot during the campaign to level up, to you know get through the game quickly, so that you can actually start doing most of the end game, you don't really care all that much about battle pass anymore once you have gathered the most important rewards and you're just gonna accumulate those points on the side. What you really want to do is, again, all the dailies, uh, for example, for the shadow activities, you want to do Raid the Vault, the Battleground, you want to do the Legacy of the Haradrim, you know, all those kind of stuff that you can do just once a day. And also like the weekly caps, make sure you reach them, because if you don't, then they will usually be lost and you're going to be dragging behind a little bit. And aside from this, also don't forget to actually have fun with the game. So I hope this video helped you with some of the more frequently asked questions. Maybe you have anything else, feel free to ask away or come to the stream and you know, ask there and I can talk about it. And otherwise, see you guys next time.